Hey, Mike, where'd you get these endless summer movie tickets from? Whoa, I love those. That's from my endless summer box set. Ooh, where'd you get that from? The link is in the show notes, baby. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Quivercast. You go left, I go right. Man, this wave is out of sight. Go on surfing. Go on surfing. Go and surfing. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Quivercast. I am so stoked. My first weatherman, and he's a surfing weatherman. We got the surfing weatherman, James Whelan. How you doing, James? Hey, what's up, man? Good to be on here. Dude, I'm stoked. I'm super happy. Weather and surfing, they have so much to do with each other. When did you know you wanted to be a weatherman? Was that a childhood dream? or? Yeah, I mean, just like you said, they really, really to go hand in hand. And that's kind of how I got into it. Really. I became a surfer when I was in high school, like a lot of us, you know, I was in high school and my buddy took me surfing once here in South Florida. It was tiny little waves. I remember it was in Boca of all places too. It wasn't the greatest waves, but the water was clear. The sun was out and I'm like, I want to do this. So I got with him to borrow some boards at first and then just totally got hooked on it. And I thought, you know, as I'm going through high school, I thought, well, what kind of career could I have that incorporates at least some kind of surfing into it so I can have fun, you know, in my career? So I was a very science minded dude, you know, so I was good at math and science and physics and stuff. So I thought, well, I want to be able to predict when there's waves and what makes waves. Well, the weather does. So that sounds like a good match to me. <laughs> wow. Okay, cool. So early on, you, you knew kind of where you wanted to go. That's awesome. From high school. At first, I wanted to be a like a like a, one of those cool science teachers. You know, I wanted to be a teacher. I had already started to go to college for a little bit. And then I, I changed my mind and I applied to Florida State. To my surprise, I got in. And I remember asking my mom, like, I was nervous to ask my mom, can I go to Florida state? You know, cause it's away, right. It's not at home. Yeah. And I'm like, ma, I got into Florida state. Uh, can I go there? And she was like, Oh my God, yes, this is amazing. And here I was stressing about it. Right. <laughs> this yeah. goes to show as a kid, you really don't know uh, your parents that well. <laughs> so you started surfing in high school. Were you always going to the beach where you're like a, a beach grom or. Yeah. I was always going to the beach. I was kind of, the older one of my crew. So I drove a lot. So everybody piled oh, in my you car, you know, and <laughs> yeah, always yeah, went yeah, to the yeah. beach and then couldn't drive or whatever. We used to take the bus to the beach. We used to take the bus to like commercial pier and go surfing. We go to Pompano and Deerfield and all that and uh, jump out, surf all day, come back and hope our parents didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> you getting out of high school. And you go into college, you decide you want to be a weatherman. What kind of weatherman were you planning on being? Were you going to be a television guy? Or what were you thinking? Because there's a lot of ways. Right. There's a, there are a lot of meteorologists. Yeah, right. A lot of people yeah. employ meteorologists. And I looked into a lot of that, too. But I remember reading an article in the Sun Sentinel about meteorology and uh, that they need, like, meteorologists on TV and stuff. And, you know, I was reading all about it. And I'm like, you know that is super cool and i remember my little sister yeah. had one of the local weathermen come to her class so they let me go to it even though i was older they let me go to it and i saw him up there and i'm like you know what this could be i'm not a behind the desk sit here all day type person like the national weather service does and that's great if you like that if you yeah. like the research and the sit and uh, do all that stuff but i'm like i want i want to go out and have some fun and be out there so yeah. I decided, yeah, I'm going to try to get into TV, even though it's super hard to get into. And it took me, you know, it took me a couple of years to even get my first job. What kind of personality do you have to have? Well, I mean, you got to have some kind of likable personality, I guess. You know, you got to have something. I mean, we're not all jokesters, but you got to have something that people are going to tune in and like. Right. When you're young, it's hard to showcase what you're going to be in the future, right? Like. So it's it's very hard to break into the business because you just need somebody to give you a chance 
so you can shine and then kind of show what you're going to evolve into as you, you know, get more experience and grow up. I remember I, I got a call. It was from Clarksburg, West Virginia. Ooh. Right. I, know. Yeah. <laughs> I was in Tallahassee at the time. And I, okay. uh, but I've been waiting like, dude, like two years, right? Like okay. I've been so like amped and ready to go after graduation that he called me up and he goes, listen, I can't offer you a lot of money but you'll be the chief meteorologist. We don't really have a weather computer, so you kind of have to make it all up. And oh, do this wow. Stuff. And we're going to give you 14 grand a year. Can you come up here? <laughs> and I said, I'll be there next week. I mean, oh, what am I going to say? I mean, <laughs> this is what you got to do, right? So I guess. You don't get wow. that. This, <laughs> nowadays, nobody's going to go over that. But when you really, really want something like, I didn't care about anything. I just wanted to go and get my career going. So money wasn't the important thing, which is good. A lot of surfers are like that. Yeah, for sure. If I thought about money, I don't think I'd ever be doing this job still. <laughs> <laughs> it's not It's not a high paying nothing, right? Like though, there's a few people that make a lot of money, right? Just yeah, I'm sure. maybe two or three per station. Like that's not a lot. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you were like going to school, after school, you move, you set up to Tallahassee, you're still kind of near the water. What was it like moving away from the water? Was that a rough time? You know, I had researched Tallahassee and and where I could surf up there. And I just thought in my head at the time, obviously I was hyper-focused on graduating college and getting my meteorology degree, but you know, I still wanted to be a surfer. So I was looking up all the places to surf and lo and behold, oh my gosh, we had so much surf and <laughs> up there. Oh, okay. You could drive to the Gulf Coast and surf Panama City, Pensacola in the summer, go over to Jacksonville, St. Augustine. Everything was within reach and we could always get waves on any days, you know, that we wanted to go. Really, any days you didn't have class or whatever, you just it's a long drive, you know, two three yeah. hours, but you could surf all day. And I happened to live next to somebody who also was a surfer too. We moved in, he was a surfer. And so it was pretty cool. We had a few people in the apartment complex we were in that surfed and we would just jump in the car and, and go whenever we didn't have class or something. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. What are the waves like in Florida? The audience is all over the world here. Yeah. So give us a description of, of Florida waves. They're not great. So, <laughs> <laughs> so th- this is what makes Florida surfers like – you know the best in the world literally <laughs> kelly slater's from florida it's because we got to take garbage and make it good right so we, okay. uh, any little thing we get super stoked over and mm-hmm. uh you know it can get frustrating at times today was one of those days i thought it was going to be like waste the chest high and it's pretty much mm-hmm. flat so <laughs> there, there's oh, that wow. you know we get skunked a lot too it's super difficult to forecast down here we got the bahamas blocking most of our swell window and Something's always within driving distance, though, so there's that. But obviously, you know, as you get older and have a job and family and stuff, it's hard to yeah. spend two hours driving somewhere. There are some good things, too. We have the most gorgeous water that there is, the Caribbean clear blue, warm yeah. year round. It doesn't really get below 70 degrees, and it's just so beautiful. Like, we're so spoiled with the water. It's just, yeah. There's not more waves, but you get in and we're just, you know, we try to stay appreciative of it too, because we know we've all been other places where the water's not great and we get home. We're like, oh my gosh, look at this water. Like, you can see a tiny seashell in 10 feet wow. of water on the ground. Like, it's crazy how clear it is. It's paradise. Yeah, it really is. Except for we need better waves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. With the water being so clear and the water being so warm, do you have a wetsuit? I do have a wetsuit. Okay. You know, I have a one for everything. I maybe wear the full suit once a year. Really mm-hmm. not for the water, it's for the air. You know, you got to you got to run from the car to the water and you, so you just put the full suit on. You could probably do it the spring. The spring most of the time works fine. What's the average temperature of the water there? 70? Yeah, like in the winter it's like uh 70 to 75 and in the summer it's like 88 85, 88. So oh, wow. yeah, it doesn't get, doesn't get terribly cold. And whenever a temperature drops too, we're such wimps that, you know, it'll drop a little bit because the North wind or something. And everybody's like, Oh, it's freezing out here. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, What's really? freezing? It's like 72. It's not freezing. <laughs> okay. The air temperature is 72. Yeah. Well, no, the water is What's like it? 72. The air 
Oh yeah, the water is. What's the air temperature get down to? It, it does get cool. We'll have some mornings in the forties. I mean, that's chilly for us. Forties oh, okay. in the morning yeah, would be chilly. chilly for us. Yeah, that's yeah. really cold. With the wind mm-hmm. blowing I mean, too. I mean, it's kind of cold, but it never stops. You know, any of us because we know, like, we're just kind of wimps with the cold, and it's not really that bad. <laughs> okay, so since you're the weather man and you got to predict all this. How often do you guys get like weird weather? You guys kind of get funky weather sometimes. Yeah, there's a little bit of something going on all the time. You know, the winter is is a lot quieter, except for this winter because of El Nino. This was kind of predicted, right? And in fact, mm-hmm. this year was pretty much textbook El Nino year, right? We had a ton of storm systems, one after another, move to the south, you know, from California all the way across and stay really low in latitude. So that rolls right over us. So it's kind of been a, a stormier, cloudier type of winter. Maybe not cold, colder, because we haven't really had any big cold outbreaks, but it's been cooler just because of clouds and rain around a lot. So we have gotten a ton of rain because of this El Nino. Well, you have weather charts now that, like you said before, you kind of had to do it yourself, but is it fun kind of predicting the local weather, like microclimate? Kind yeah, of thing? It, I mean, it is. There's so much data nowadays. Like, uh, you know, obviously with everything being online, I can look at an endless supply of weather maps, right? Like, I don't yes. know if you ever look at weather maps. Weather maps, at first of all, have like 300 things all on there. When somebody <laughs> looks at it, they just don't like, why are all these lines and dash? Like, what is this? But we as trained meteorologists, we know what they are. And there's certain things that are matched together that we know, okay, this must be a map. But even if it's not labeled, okay, this is a map of this and this. Okay, so now we know what to look at. I mean, there's so much data that you can't even look at all of it. You just have to pick like your favorite things that maybe have the most to do with your immediate area. And that's what you go with it every day. You're in the whole south region of Florida. Yeah. Extreme Southeast Florida, yeah. Yeah, our area covers uh, Boca de Sebastian is my, we call it DMA in TV language, our designated market okay. area. So our signal reaches from Boca Raton to Sebastian Inlet. Wow, that's a, that's a good stretch right there. Any weird experiences that you've had watching weather? Mm-hmm. Like, have you ever seen something maybe coming up and going outdoors and watching it? Oh, yeah, we all try to, we have like a little balcony here too. We all try to. You know, we're stuck in a studio with no windows. We're watching okay. this stuff on the radar and the satellite and stuff. And we're, we want to run outside. So we'll always find time to like run outside, and just go look at it, <laughs> <laughs> take some video. Like if we're in hurricane coverage or something, we're just going to, oh, we want to see it. Here, here comes a band. We'll run outside just to see it, you know. But to be in it and reporting on it, usually reporters do that kind of thing. They want the actual yes. meteorologist to be you know, adding the helm here and, and not out in it. So <laughs> are you in charge of sending the guys or gals out to where they need to report to? No, like, I, Hey, head over this management way? would do that, but we would inform them. You know, we would tell them where we think is best that they could go. So they'll come to us and they'll say, Hey, we have so-and-so and so-and-so and we want them approximately in these areas. Where could they go to get the best yeah. visuals? And then we would tell them. Super fun. That sounds so fun. Yeah. You're also into like the wildlife and you guys have some crazy critters down in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> My wife calls it, it's like Jurassic park in the backyard just cause we have so many like just insane things from alligators, the iguanas, Jesus lizards. I mean, everything turtles crazy down here. It, it is surprising like that we don't have more gator attacks because they are literally all over the place. <laughs> Really? Okay. So let's talk about the surf lineups in particular. What weird animals are in the lineup a lot? And do gators actually go down into the lineup? Sometimes they do. I've never seen it when I've been out in the water, but we've just had some video actually was on the Gulf Coast. Uh, Gators out swimming in the water. No. Yeah. Like swimming in the waves too. Like No. And I've seen video in New Smyrna and... I think way back I posted something. It was in Juno. There was an alligator in the lineup, <laughs> just swimming out there. They can withstand water. They just can't like stay out there. And then I had a picture. Somebody at the um, Breakers Reef. The Breakers is a fancy hotel on Palm Beach. Okay, it used to be a pier back in like the 1900s or whatever. So there's like a reef now where the pylons used to be. But anyway, somebody okay. dove down there, and there was this huge gator 
just sitting down at, on the pylons. Crystal clear blue water and the gators just sitting there. <laughs> No yeah, that was way. a crazy post uh, to see that, that they're out there too. But again, they don't really, you know, I feel like maybe they know that the ocean isn't really their element, that there hasn't been any attacks in the ocean. Now the water, the regular water, the, you know, lakes and stuff. Yeah. yeah as yeah. Floridians, we all know, like, you can't like go knee deep in any water anywhere except the ocean, like, because... <laughs> Going knee deep is like their dinner bell. Like they don't care. Who, they don't care who it is. And you can't oh, walk man. dogs around the edge of lakes. Like we all kind of yeah. know this thing, but we've had quite the influx of, you know, new people coming in, and you yeah, know, we see it all the time. We're like, what do you do? You should know. Don't ever do that. <laughs> the lakes are pretty, but don't go in those <laughs> things. <laughs> no, yeah, that's sketchy. Yeah, that's so sketchy. Okay, what about like the sharks and stuff in the in florida you guys have quite a few shark we do like shark season is insane and it's right now like february is like the peak of the shark migration season and there are like times where it is just clouds of sharks huge no just clouds of sharks just going in i i went out once on a little mission to to record it and i uh, teamed up with a guy on palm beach and he paddled out on his uh kayak and dropped one of my gopros in the water so it like, you know, so you could see it, I tied it to like a buoy, yeah. you know, and yeah. I wanted the sharks to all swim by it. And it was crazy video. I didn't factor in the bobbing effect, but <laughs> you can still yeah, see yeah. like so he did a perfect, he dropped it right in the middle. And there's just, I mean, just thousands of sharks going by. And the thing is, they're out there when you're out there, like you can, the water's crystal clear, like you can see the sharks and they usually go around or something like that. But it is crazy. I remember times where the swell is coming up, right? And it's about to break. And you can, since the water's so clear, you can see through the wave and you can just see the sharks all lined up, catching the wave and kind of coming right at you. And you just duck dive and you just kind of kink your head. And you're like, well, I hope it turns away. Cause you don't want to open your eyes. So you just turn your head like, ah, and then you come up the back of the wave. You're like, all right, I guess I'm good. And then you just keep paddling. Yeah, it's crazy. There have been many times like that where you're looking up at the sharks like riding the wave and you're like, well, I got to go under this thing. I mean, obviously none of us want to get pounded. So (laughs) you don't really have much of a choice but the duck dive. (laughs) If you see sharks in the lineup, you're skipping that surf session, right? Well, not really. (laughs) I mean, we're so used to it that like there has to be several factors in order for us not to actually paddle out. You got to understand, we don't get waves all that often. So if it's firing, like there's no sharks like keeping us from paddling out. Are you kidding me? But let's say maybe there's an hour left of daylight and there's nobody okay. else out. All, all right, right, we're not going to do that. Or if it's like Dom Patrol and you're sitting out there and you're like, ah, this is super sketch and there's nobody else out. The minute you put other people out, you're like, ah, our odds just went down on something happening. So we'll paddle out if there's other people out, no problem. And what kind of sharks are these? They're normally like black tips, spinners, and sandbar sharks. So we see them jump out of the water a lot. The spinners are the ones that launch out of the water and spin really fast and then fall. I call those kind of like the, the, like dumb dog of the shark world because they're, they're not very smart. I've seen them go over the falls before. Like you could tell they're just like the dumb puppy dog, right? That's just out there okay. eating or whatever. They're never going to stalk you. They're never going to like on purpose attack you. They'll bite you because they're dumb and they think your hand's a fish or something, but they're oh, not gonna, gotcha. whereas like a bull shark, you mm. get bull sharks too, especially near inlets and stuff. Those things like are cunning, right? Like they're going to stop. They're going to circle you. They're going to nudge you a little bit. Like I've known people that got bumped because they're just kind of checking you out. And the minute you turn your eyes away, like they know you're not looking at them, which I always feel is super weird. That that an animal knows when you're not looking at it. And then that's the time to attack. Like, isn't that weird? I don't know. I I just think it's weird. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's weird, but it's smart. Yeah, it really is. But yeah, so, wow. you know, those things we got to keep an eye out. And if they want you, they're not going to stop, right? They're, they're going to keep trying to oh, get yeah. you as you try to get in. So I've had some shark run-ins down here at Ocean Reef Park. It's it's a park that has like a reef that sticks out in the 
ocean and it's known for you know sing it's on singer island singer island is known to be the probably the sharkiest area down here and mm -hmm. i remember when i moved back down here I paddled out there. I was by myself and I was just mm -hmm. laying on the board. It was huge though. It was big. I barely made it out. Like it was, it was crazy big. Okay. Some swell yeah. going. And uh, I finally made it out. I caught a wave. I paddled back up to like where the waves are breaking and I rested for a second and I was laying down on the board with just, you know, my toes hanging over and yes. you know how you yes. just rest laying down. Yep. And the shark came up. He nailed my toe, like his nose hit my toe. And oh I my jerked God. my feet up, turned around, and just saw this just massive swirl of gray and thin. I mean, it was just so powerful. And it was right behind me. And I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And I just sat there with my arms and legs up. Like the, I paddled at first because you're like scared and you want to get away. And then I, you know, I finally occurred to me, well, I probably shouldn't be paddling right now if he's down there. <laughs> so I put my arms and legs up and, uh, you know, again, it was crystal clear, but he got me from behind there. And I was just like, sat out there a bit. And of course, no waves come. Me, You know, I could right. barely make it yeah. out. And then when the shark I mean, all of a sudden goes, yeah, a big a wave, lull. Yeah, a huge lull. But uh, nothing happened. He didn't like nick me or nothing. It, but I felt it hit, like his nose hit my toe. And I... I, it was crazy. I paddled in after that and was like, holy cowboys. But I did go surfing later in the day because I wanted to shake it off. You don't want anything to rest you. you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I get it. <laughs> get through the right. fear. Okay, a couple more animals. What about snakes? Do they go in the lineup? Sometimes. I've never seen snakes out there, though. But I've seen video of snakes, like, on the beach. You know, well, they'll oh. be in the dunes and stuff, you know what I mean? Oh, no. So there'll, there'll be snakes in the dune. So if you put, you know, maybe your towel next to the dune, that's probably not the best idea. There'll be <laughs> stuff in there. And bobcats. Bobcats, for some reason, like the the mangroves and the dune line and all that. I've seen oh, tons of bobcats, but they're usually scared of you, you know. You, yeah, I would think Yeah, so. you barely get a glimpse of them, and they're running away. But I suppose yeah. if you start poking anything with a stick, it's not going to like it. No, it might have come back at you. Yeah. Exactly. What about manatees? You have them down there, but they don't want the ocean, huh? Yeah, no, they go in the ocean. So manatees are pretty cool. Like they're protected. Yeah, they're so rad. You're, yeah, you're not supposed to touch them or interfere with them or anything. But I have, you know, several stories where manatees come up. Normally, you know, if it gets super cold, we have an inlet where they heat the water at the power plant uh, next to one of the inlets. So they'll okay. all funnel into there to stay warm. And then, like, the first warm day, right, they'll start to venture out of there and they'll come out the inlet on Palm Beach and then they'll go down Palm Beach. And so we'll see, like, just little families of them, you know, going south and they'll stop and, you know, they'll go right under us. Sometimes they stop and hang out. We had one what? family come by once and, like, the mom and dad kept going and a little kid just stayed with us and we're like, uh-oh, like, hopefully it doesn't. <laughs> Hopefully it's not lost because they left and this thing just hung around us for like 30 minutes while we're oh, paddling or we're paddling around. We're trying to catch waves. And it, every time we paddle, we're like, his face is right there. We're like, dude, it might be time to go. But it was really cool sharing that experience. And he eventually oh, went yeah. on. I'm sure he got back with his little pod family there and dolphins oh, wow. too. Sometimes there's dolphins out there. Yeah. 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 Okay, and then you have a video on your Instagram, which is super cool, of a sawfish that was taped recently kind of in your area, right? Oh, yeah. Those things are just prehistoric. Those are amazing. Those are usually in the, in the like, swampy, marshy areas, like brackish water. The, you know, the video I had, I think, was, like, right along the shoreline. But I've never really seen one while surfing out there because they are pretty rare. Like, the, the population's yeah. coming back, so that's nice. Oh, that's good. Yeah, but... Normally they kind of breed and everything up the uh, brackish water, and then venture out. That one was a big one too. They're super cool. Dude, that was awesome, like a drone video of it. In your local area, what's your favorite place to surf? Do you have a certain break that you usually check first? I like Palm Beach. Again, it, it's kind of home to me, and you know the water is just so nice. Uh, the beach is nice. You know, there's not a lot of access because it's all like wealthy people and whatnot. Okay, you know. But, you know, being kind of a local, I guess, there, you figure out little nooks and crannies that you can of course. sneak in and stuff and, and 
figure it out without getting bothered. And as long as you don't bother people, you know, most of the time you just got to be respectful, respectful of other people's property. And of course I see it a lot from people coming from out of town. And I mean, I speak up now because I'm like, you're going to ruin it for everybody. Dude, don't uh-huh. use other people's hoses. Don't like blare your music loud. Like you got to act like you're sneaking in and sneaking out. <laughs> and that's the only way, right? I, 100%, I, agree. I, I like Palm beach a lot. It, you know, I proposed to my wife there, you know, oh, it's cool. just a special place for me. So I love it. I don't yeah. have enough money to live there, but I love going. There. <laughs> <laughs> Is it crowded there or uncrowded? Like how's the lineup? It depends. There's, there's a lot of new surfers, lately so there's a lot of like soft tops and stuff at at the main uh, break we call it flagpole or just midtown so yeah. that break because it is the public so to speak the public beach access yes has a lot of people just up and down some know what they're doing some don't and so it's kind of a mix but once you start to get to the more advanced breaks like farther up and stuff and you know you get to uh you kind of weed out that a little bit just because people aren't sure what they're doing. And, you know, the most famous break on Palm beach, of course, reef road. Yes. That, reef road. that really doesn't break anymore. I mean, people call up there reef road, but it's really not. <laughs> we just know okay. that just, but it's really not reef road. hasn't broke good in years. You know, it, it doesn't do what it used to do. It used to, you know, the wave would come in and just keep jacking up bigger and bigger yeah. and kind of barrel through the inside. Well, now it breaks farther out so it's you know it's still kind of a big wave but it's kind of a slopey you know difficult type wave and it doesn't really break right at reef road either it's kind of farther up or down everything has shifted over the years a little bit sand or what because the sand moves yeah and then they re-nurse the beach all the time and that messes Uh, everything up like we have a lot of beach re-nourishment because they just think that i guess dumping sand on the beach is you know helping everything but it's not really good for waves it may briefly make a good barreling wave but that really doesn't last like our best waves break when there's no sand on the beach oh okay you know because it's out on the sandbar right like on the beach is bad (laughs) (laughs) and then a lot of that sand is now on the outside too so you know even a waste the chest high wave is breaking on the outside when normally all that energy would come in right. and you'd get a better wave. Well, now it's dissipated on the outside. So Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there a sand problem there in South Florida? I mean, just like anywhere, there's a lot of erosion all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, they, when you let people build big, huge walls and stuff, like it's disrupting the sand mm-hmm. and that's always going to cause problems. You know, people want to protect their property too. Obviously, it's millions of dollars of property there, yep. so... You know, you're going to have that, but there's always, the sand always comes back in the summer too. Like when the waves get small and it's flat again, you can notice like <laughs> in the spring, like all the sand from the winter that got rooted away yeah. starts in its way back. And then all of a sudden the beach is huge again. Yeah. Like our beach was huge. It's weird. Like here in Palm beach this winter, we had a couple of big swells that swept up the sand but honestly it came back within like a week or two mm. and our beach in particular has been very big like most of the winter aside from those couple of big swells where other areas like maybe jupiter juno and uh up on jupiter island like they just got hammered so i think we're just getting everybody's sand from all it's over. just yeah, taking it from somewhere else <laughs> and bringing it to you here because yeah it's really big the beach is big there's rocks on the beach those are all covered yeah your surfing blog. So how did that start? Well, that started because when I got hired here, you know, I, I it was something I always wanted to do oh, okay. was to incorporate surfing with, you know, being a meteorologist and stuff. So the station liked the idea and they made a, a special section for me on our webpage, WPTV.com yep. and slash surfing. I just made it a simple thing to redirect to that. And I just updated with the forecast every day. You know, this was before social media too, Mm -hmm. like just updating that page, you know, whenever I could and people, you know, started looking at it. And since I'm local and they see me out in the water with them all the time, I mean, I know what's going on probably, you know, more than 
anybody that's going to be out there and forecasting, you know, as I'm not doing it from California or from another place. Like I'm out there all the time and I see the effects of our local weather patterns. I don't get it right all the time. And today, <laughs> today happens to be one of those days, okay. but, uh, you know, people do realize that too. They, they know that there's some degree of, you know, you're going to get stuff. You're going to be off sometimes. I mean, that's weather in general too. We're never going to get it a hundred percent right. You know, which is why we use percentages and estimates, that kind of stuff. Cause it's never going to be a hundred percent. Right. But it's pretty amazing. Like, technology now like how we can pick things out even a week down the line mm-hmm. like we pick things out and say something is brewing here something is coming it may not be exact right, right? right but the fact that a week down the road we can predict something coming a storm or something in the future is like amazing you know like, yes predicting the future is hard and that you know if you've ever done a basketball basketball bracket you know like <laughs> The future is, is hard. Oh, that's you know? true. That's true. <laughs> Let me ask you this. So are you doing your own surf forecasting? Are you using Surfline or your other outlets? No, I'm doing it myself. So I look at the maps and certain web pages that show the winds and, and the patterns and the different models. You know, we have a bunch of different models now. I try to figure out what I think is best and how that actual pattern or that wave is going to when it hits here, mm-hmm. how it's going to react. I try to put that little extra in it saying, well, we know if we have a long period swell here, I mean, for us, we don't have any point breaks, so it's going to be closing out, yeah, right? Yeah, like, A lot of closeouts. Add those type of things in there too so people know. I don't really give specifics because people give people get on my case about – I was going to ask know, you like, that. Oh, this spot is going to be good. <laughs> yes. You figure out your spot. I'm telling you generally what what's going on here in general. And then, yeah, I'll give, uh, you know, that kind of specifics, weather specifics, but never, never spot. And I never, you know, when I post waves and stuff, I hardly ever, if at all locally post where it is, mm-hmm. I may say up coast or down South or something very, very vague because people get on my case for that. You know, there's, <laughs> There is a bunch of whiners out there for sure. But I understand too, like, you know, people want to know exact locations and then like you'll get a hundred people to show up and I don't want that either. No, no, a hundred percent, you know. Okay. So that's funny. Have you ever given the specific spots and then took in heat from it? Yeah. At first (laughs) I was, at first I was saying like, maybe not. You know, down here, we don't really have like a specific name to a wave. Okay. You know, it's always a general area. Yeah, right? of course. So I would say, you know, like a city or whatever. Mm-hmm. And people would get on my case about saying that when I never really, you know, there's like 10 breaks in that general vicinity. I never really said that, but I did say like the general oh, that's funny. city and then they all got on my case about it. Yeah. When people whine, I, I sometimes I fight back because I just I can't take it. Right. Like I'm human, too, man. And when I see a bunch of BS, like sometimes I can't hold it in and I'll start fighting back because some of it is ridiculous. right? Of course. Like, yeah. I can see both sides. I really can. But, yeah, that's just funny. I could I could see people giving heat. But, you know, they're telling their friends that we're going to Surfline gets away with it. They got cams and everything yeah, everywhere. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. what are you guys getting on me for? Surfline's got cams up everywhere. 100%. I mean, <laughs> you're right. You're right. That's such BS. But you know what? People see you in the lineup. So, of course, they're going to. Yeah. So, but Mostly face to face. Yeah. Everybody's nice, right? Of course. Like, everybody's a tough guy on social media. Oh, but yeah. when, you, when you're face to face, it's a different story. Yes. 100% true. You just went on a trip. You want to tell us about I that did. trip a little bit? Was that based all around surfing? It was. I went to Peru. Wow. Stoked. Yeah, it was amazing. You know, I've never been <laughs> to, you know, south of the equator. I've never been to South America. So it was something I wanted to do. Cool. I had a trip planned once to Chicama. Mm. And it was kind of a half surf, half, you know, helping people there okay. too oh, cool. this is a poor area i got all these donations i made shirts for the women's surf team that they were trying to help and blah 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 and then we had a, a hurricane and i couldn't go oh no <laughs> a hurricane was threatening south florida 
I'm like, listen, I have this trip to Peru. It is in the middle, literally in the middle of nowhere. There's no getting home. And they're like, well, then you can't go. Wow. So this was like years in the making. I didn't go to Chicama this time because it's way up to the north. Mm-hmm. But ever since that trip, I wanted to go down to Peru to check it out. And like, it was super fun. Like there's waves all the time. It picks up every single swell out there. Mm-hmm. The water wasn't that cold because it's the middle of summer right now for them. Oh, yeah. Well, when I went, you know, yeah. it's, it's summer. So it was colder than here, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> colder than 75. <laughs> And you're spoiled. <laughs> I know, yeah. All I wore was a topper. So even me, a South Floridian, if all I had to do was wear a topper, like, yeah. it's not that bad. Sarah Azul was the coldest because it was the farthest south. And it was probably 65. It was chill. Like, just jumping into that, it was chilly. No, it's cold. Around and you got that long 350-yard left. Like, yes. It's, it's a lot of paddling, too, and running up the beach, too. And it's all rocks everywhere pretty much. So that was interesting trying to navigate rocks and whatnot. It's just not what we have here in South Florida. Yeah. Yeah. So totally different environment. Whenever there's that, we're like, Ooh, <laughs> you can get hurt on that. <laughs> but it was pretty cool. The waves were super fun. Yeah. You know, they yeah. weren't like crazy, you know, my skill level isn't super high and you know, I'm older now, so I don't really want like thumping waves. Right. I'm fine with just long, slopey you know lefts and stuff and you know love it so super fun was it a group you guys all went there or who'd your wife go or who went with you no i went with a group of guys uh, gnarly charlie he's from new smyrna okay he puts groups together kind of goes all over the place that uh, okay. travels he does surf contests for little groms and stuff in new smyrna and he plans trips to everywhere so you know, he calls me up when he wants to come down here for warm waves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, are you going on any trips? And he's like, yeah, come to Peru. So I hooked up with him and about six of us went there from Florida. I was the only one from South Florida. They're all up in yeah. Central Florida and yeah. North Florida. But it was super fun. Great group of guys, too. You know how you always worry about. Yeah. Somebody's always like crazy or annoying or something but no everybody we had a great time laughing the entire time yeah you know it was great so you basically were raised in florida you still live in florida i know you've moved away a bit here and there right is like florida your home are you staying there forever or do you have plans to like move into a different market or or come into california or somewhere else along the coast Hawaii. Yeah, it was my goal to come here into South Florida. This was my end goal. Like when oh, okay. I started this whole crazy race of being a meteorologist, yeah. like my goals were to come to, you know, West Palm. I grew up in Broward County. That's so that's a county south of us. Okay. Just north of Fort Lauderdale, really. Yeah. Palm Beach always had bigger ways, better ways. Mm. So the market was more appealing to me. So it was my goal to come to West Palm Beach and I am fortunate enough that I reached my goal and, That's and right. came here. So I'm super happy that, you know, I'm here. I got married here and, I, you know, I want to stay here for sure. As long as, you know, they'll have me. Like, you never <laughs> know what's going to go on in the TV business. You know, you have things like this, podcasts and stuff. Like, we, we don't really know the direction of it, you know, in the future. So, you know, I'm hoping it just hangs on 10 more years or so. No, well, I think <laughs> you have a niche, you being the surfing weatherman. Like no one else is really doing that that I know of. I'm sure there's some other surfing weathermen out there, but you're the surfing weatherman, and that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, your your job works hand in hand with what your your hobby is. Exactly, and that was my plan from the start yeah. too. And it, you know, it is kind of surprising that nobody has you know put those two together. Like there's been a few people along the way. Like when I was going to college, there was a guy in Jacksonville, Tim Deegan, and he was you know, the surfing weather, like the OG, really. He was the original surfing weatherman. I went over there and I talked to him for a little bit. He was the typical blonde hair, you know, and like tan all the time and stuff. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm going to, he didn't really incorporate it into his weather cast or anything like that. People just knew he was a surfer. Right. And I thought, well, I'm going to try to use this science knowledge that I have and put the science knowledge out there along with, you know, trying to predict everything else. Smart. I think that's, yeah, worked out. You know, not everybody wants to know the reason why, but there are a lot of people that are really interested in 
you know, the why things happen and that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, what you did is genius, in my opinion. Well, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> not far from you. And I know it's a little bit of ways, get it like kind of sideways here. And you can tell me we don't need to talk about this, but the Bermuda Triangle is kind of in your area. Yeah. Is that a true thing? Do you see something? Is that why you're bringing this up? <laughs> yeah, I just looked in the general area. I always kind of bring up something different. So every now and then, a show airs about the Bermuda Triangle on Discovery Channel okay. or History Channel or whatever channel, and I'm in it. Oh, are you? <laughs> I didn't know that. I have not seen that. I'm in it, talking about the weather events uh, and stuff. And I did not know so that. They were making a show. Okay. Uh, here at PBIA, our local airport. Okay. And my boss called me and said, hey, these guys are making a show about Bermuda Triangle. Do you want to go over there and, like, help them? They're not paying anything, but, you know, you can go over there and I'll let you do it. Because nor normally when you're under contra contract, you're not allowed to do anything, right? Okay. Like they own but he said, okay. And I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll go do it. Yeah. So I went over there and they, they shot, like, shot it in a hangar for, like, a day. Fly to... Andros and stuff in the Bahamas because kind of that's where like some stuff happened with the Bermuda Triangle. Okay. So they were asking me about certain weather patterns because their theory was that, and it's kind of a good one. Like it was about, I don't know if I get it exactly right, but the way like certain uh, clouds, like thunderstorm clouds, mm -hmm. you know, they have, an electrical field of course them, right yes and so this electrical field sometimes can attach to like a metal plane mm -hmm. and then sometimes that can cause like clouds around the plane so that would kind of you know kind of make what people say about well we couldn't see anything because i was always in the clouds and our instruments were going everywhere because the electric field maybe was messing with the instruments mm, and interesting we, they had some incident on a certain date and I had to go back and research oh. that date and see if there were any weather patterns, you know, going on at that specific time, mm -hmm. you know, where that plane was flying and stuff. That's cool. That they got these results in this little incident that happened or whatever. So I'm in there saying, oh, yeah, look at this towering queue and that this could <laughs> cause this and <laughs> It's kind of funny because every now and then somebody will call me up. Oh, my God, I just saw you on Discovery Channel. Oh, that's so like, cool. I don't know when they air it, but <laughs> every now and then it pops up. Yeah. But there's definitely cool. something freaky out there. I think they had, you know, I think the triangle part, is there something that only is in those lines? Probably not, but probably in the general vicinity. Yes, yes, yes. The Maybe line weather up. has, you know, it's the subtropics. It's stuff goes on in there over the ocean where there's not a lot of records you know okay and so there's probably something going on there yeah probably yeah. weather wise you know something like that instead of aliens or whatever right like it's probably something else i saw another one where it was like methane gas bubbling up from the ocean because you know Methane gas is going to make a plane sink because the buoyancy, <laughs> right? Less buoyancy, this plane will fall, right? If you don't, just like if you have bubbles in the ocean, a boat's going to sink, right? Okay, fair. Because the buoyancy is not there. So interesting. That was another explanation. <laughs> well, so we just don't know, is what you're saying. Yeah. I love that stuff, though. Yeah, I love it too. Did you guys have an earthquake in Florida and there's some weird plane patterns? Yeah, it was, it was off the coast of Cape Canaveral or whatever. And the first thing we all thought when we heard that, we're like, Th this is the same thing. Like, because it just happened only a few years ago mm -hmm. where they, the Navy detonated this huge bomb to see if, you know, a ship's can, hull can take this bomb or whatever the heck, right? Yeah. And it registered as a 3.9. We went and looked it up. We're like, look, it's the same. Wow, it's 3. pretty 9, big. The same exact area. And so then I had the desk our news desk call you know the navy and ask them the, well do you guys have anything going on they're like nope we don't have anything going on and so then we're like all right well maybe it's not that but that just seems a little fishy so then later on somebody sends us this airplane that did like circles not right at the spot of the earthquake but it's within a hundred miles of the thing yeah. it's close right yeah i saw the video yeah 
did circles and went all over. So then I started researching it. I'm like, oh my gosh, it wasn't the same day either. I I first thought it was the same day, Mm -hmm. but it was a couple days prior. As I looked more into it, you know, I made that video because I knew that people would go nuts over that. Everybody loves loves conspiracy weird. weird Loves conspiracy and mystery. But even after that, I wish I would have looked farther because it ended up being like a Korean Navy ship that flew out of that flew out of Jacksonville. And I'm like, well, that's weird. That is weird. We never really got any. I mean, who knows if it? People said that that thing does that all the time, and they do those flight patterns all the time. Mm. It's not connected. Yeah, it was just interesting that it coincided a little bit. Yeah, at least within a week, you know, or a few days or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you this: What do you think of social media? You know, it it has definitely evolved over the years. I remember, you know, it's crazy to think like feel old when you're like. I remember first signing on to it, right, yes. and like not knowing what it is and companies not know, you know, companies banning it. Cause they're like, it's wasting time. Right. And then they go full force into you have to be doing this. So it is part of my job, yeah, right? Yeah. Like they want us to be doing this stuff. So people all the time tell me, you know, why are you doing this or whatever? Well, it is fun, obviously mm-hmm. to a point, but it's a lot of work too. Like it putting is. these videos together is a lot of work and you know they want us to do this stuff right now you know in our station i on instagram at least i have the the most followers and the most following but like you said it's just that niche market and that's it like what they're gonna do with that i don't know like yeah we can't really do a whole lot because we're under contract so Mm. Now, I do like it, but in other ways, too, there's lots of negatives that you have to really have thick skin and look out for stuff and scams and that kind of stuff. So you have a lot of followers. I, I'm interested. I, I don't know how you would tell. I, I'm sure that we could. But how many people like me, I'm in Southern California, are following the surfing weatherman Cause just because you surf and we like surfers? Other surfers like surfers? Right, yeah. I, I think uh, – There's probably a lot. I do have a lot of like local, you know, just the state of Florida. Of course. Uh, There's a bunch, but it's, it it has started branching out with posting more of this, you know, kind of crazy wildlife or whatever mystery stuff, like anything having to do with the beach really is what I was kind of focused on because we're all kind of watermen. We all kind of love the beach, regardless if it's surfing or not, we all kind of want to know what's going on at the beach. You know, I post a lot of, stuff about that you know and that pertains to whether it's the west coast the east coast north south wherever yeah everybody has a beach and everybody kind of wants to know what's going on so that has expanded things here you know a lot too so follow me at surfing weatherman (laughs) yeah i was funny because i'm looking at some of the people that liked your photos and then some of the shapers from australia i mean you got a pretty international crew of people watching you yeah yeah it's pretty cool yeah barton lynch kind of always uh, like stuff too which is crazy you got some of those people you know and then i try to post on other people's stuff and you get you know kelly slater liking it and, <laughs> and kind of stuff i hate the name drop but you know you get it's kind of you know it's kind of so dumb that you're like oh my god look at this you know of course you know, but you know it's pretty cool that some people are like seeing my stuff i have some ideas for like creative things and it's funny that I'm sure other people do this with social media too. Mm -hmm. Like you come Mm -hmm. up with this crazy creative idea. It takes you weeks to put it together. Yes. And it just falls flat. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You you put every detail into it, it falls flat. Meanwhile, you get some crap video, you post it immediately (laughs) with nothing and the thing blows up. Yes. Yeah. Well, I would do it. Yeah. Sometimes. (laughs) So there have been numerous famous surfers. Mm -hmm. From Florida. So have you ever surfed with Kelly or any of the Hobgoods or anything? Like seen them in the water? No, but I had the, the Hobgoods stop by. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, Damo and CJ, they came in. You know when they made their movie, To It By CJ? Yes, uh, uh, quite a few years ago, but yeah. They were playing in one of the local theaters. And so <laughs> I had them come by the station here and we did some interviews and stuff. Oh, and rad. Like yeah, now uh, CJ is awesome. You know, he comment. He's in Orlando, so he's local. Yeah. So, you know, he'll comment and 
message me and stuff like that. It's just super cool a bunch of guys there that that came in. So that that was really neat to see. And we've had um you know Tom Curran too, you know. Oh, he, wow. he's, come by. Yeah. He's, he's played in um some of our music festivals and stuff. So I got to go, oh, you know, cool. hang out with him cool. for a bit. Super cool guy too, too. you know, he's so mellow and <laughs> you know, he's, he's quite a character too and <laughs> I mean, just legend, you know, like I'm just sitting there like this, this is crazy. Yeah. I haven't met yeah. Kelly yet, you know, and I hope to someday, you know, yeah. he'll come by because he knows some of the surfers down here. You know, we have a, a few really popular ones, Peter Mendia and Keppa now is following in his footsteps. Keppa just rips out there. I hope he can make it on tour. That would be amazing. Oh, yeah. You know, so he's been down here with a few people, but it's just never matched up to where I get to say, hey. <laughs> What about me? So if you're listening, Kelly, come down. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, that's a good question. A lot of United States professional surfers on the tour right now. I don't know. if Do you follow the tour at all? Do you watch it? Surfing? I do. I do sometimes. Not as much as I used to, but, uh, you know, I do now. Like at work, I'll, I'll watch it if it's if it's on right now. I But, uh, you know, some of it. For sure, you know, the changing of the guard now, right? So we're kind of shifting from all the people that yes. we grew up watching, you know, like yes. Slater, Mick Fanning, Parco, and all those guys. Yeah. And now it's all the new people. Love John John, man. I hope he gets into it more now. I know he's got a lot going on, but man, that guy just is amazing, you know. Yeah. The stuff he pulls off, you know, the that's the that's the spark, right? It's not just being a good server, it's like when you have this amazing, like, you can't believe that they just pulled that off. That's what Slater had, right? Like, 100%. The craziest things. You're like, how did he, how did they even do that? Right. right? He's from Florida. I guess that's how. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he makes, he makes do with knee high wind chop. Yeah. I mean, what he grew up with, amazing. Right on. James Whelan, thank you so much for coming on the Quivercast, man. I super appreciate it. It was super fun. Yeah, it super was. It's my first one, so thanks for that. You made it painless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. This is Mike and James Whelan, and you we are right. out of here. Hey, easy, right. guys. Man, this rig is out of sight. Go surfing. Go surfing. Going surfing with friends. Ride this wave to the shore. Battle out, I'm gonna catch ten more. Go surfing, go surfing, going surfing with friends. I don't care if it's wrong or right, I'm gonna do it all day, I'm gonna do it all night. I'm going surfing, I'm going surfing, going surfing with friends. Hey guys, Endless Summer Box Set. This thing is legit. It's authentic, numbered certificate in it. It has a five frame film strip from the original print. You will literally own a piece of history. It has a specially minted bronze medallion. Dude, that thing's sick. Okay, there's so much more here. Go to the show notes. There's a link on there. Go check this piece of history out. This thing's rad. Seriously. Smithsonian American History Museum has it. It took four years of research with 3.5 in production. All hand assembled. This thing's rad. So much to this awesome box set. Remastered DVD. Sharper images than the original film. But dude, this thing's so sick. Link in the show notes.